Hello, and welcome to today's lesson here at the Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Good evening, beloved saints. Thank you for being with us for our Wednesday Bible study. This Wednesday, November the 20, 23rd, 2022. Thank you for being online with us as we study God's holy word. We've been going through the book of Ephesians, as you're aware, uh, for the last several weeks. But today, we're going to uh, go to the Psalms 106, Psalms 106, verses 1 through 5, as we do a special uh, Thanksgiving uh, Bible study, uh, gearing and focusing in, the thank being thankful to God for all the tremendous blessings that he's bestowed upon us. So for this Bible study, we'll be in Psalms 106, verses 1 through 5. So we'll pick up at, back in Ephesians on next week. But go ahead and turn your Bibles to Psalms 106, verses 1 through 5. And I pray that, pray that you have your uh, Bibles in hand and have notepads, pen, and ready to take notes. And we'll see what God gives us from God's holy word. As you're turning to Psalms 106, I want to remind you that on tomorrow at 10 o'clock promptly, we, have, we will have our Thanksgiving Day worship. We call it the Hour of Power. 10 o'clock tomorrow promptly, if the Lord be pleased, we'll start promptly at 10 and go to roughly 11 o'clock, maybe a minute or two after. But we look forward to all the saints gathering in God's house tomorrow for Thanksgiving Day worship. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock promptly. Started promptly at 10 o'clock tomorrow for Thanksgiving Day worship. All right, y'all to be at Psalms 106, and we'll see what God gives to us out of the Psalter, Psalms 106, looking from a perspective of being thankful to God. And as you all are aware, out of Psalms 30, where we've been doing the sermon series on Sundays, we've been really highlighting what thankfulness is all about concerning the believer. And concerning a Christian, thankfulness we've identified as uh, thankfulness unto God is having gratitude for God's care and for God's blessing. Gratitude, appreciation to God for the care that He renders to us, and the bountiful blessings that He so con He so con He so continually bestows upon us. And we thank God for all the blessings and all that He uh, does in caring for us. The heart of this lesson out of Psalms 106 is being thankful to God for bringing us through our sins and our trespasses. I think as Christians, as the redeemed of God, we if God gives us the understanding of what it is to be thankful, we can appreciate the material blessings that God blesses us with, and we can appreciate the care that God gives us, if we really understand and understood what God what God has done in our lives concerning our trans, transgressions and our sins and our iniquities. And this is what Psalm 106 is dealing with. Thankfulness to God is all throughout the Word of God. Remember that. All throughout the Word of the Word, the Bible, from Genesis to the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. Thankfulness to God is throughout his word. And so if, the, if, if thankfulness to God is throughout his word, throughout our lives, spiritually, physically, how God bestows his blessings upon us, there ought to be gratitude in our spirit, in our soul, for, again, who God is in our lives. As the saints of God, we are called, we are called, I'm talking to believers of Jesus Christ, we are called to give thanks to God for everything, everything, and also to rejoice. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, everything. And again, I reiterate, if God gives us understanding what he has done in the redeemed's life concerning the abolishment of our sins and our trespasses through the atoning work of Christ Jesus, I tell you, beloved, that gives us a different perspective of what thankfulness to God is all about. That, that gives us a different viewpoint. In everything, again, 
to drive that point home. In everything, give thanks for this is the will. This is the desire of God, our Father, in Christ, our Savior, our Deliverer, concerning you who are the redeemed of God. So in Psalms 106, this Psalms focuses on Israel's past failures and Yahweh's generous care. Again, generous care through his grace. Again, Israel's past failures and Yahweh's generous grace. And again, put yourself as I'm as I as we're going through this lesson and as I was studying this lesson, I was asking the Lord to remind me of my past failures, which are many, so many that I cannot count. My, my past failures and Yahweh's, Jehovah's, how generous he is to me. And I want you to do that for yourselves as we study this word, as we look at this word from Psalms 106. Because that's what the highlight of this psalm is all about. Verse 1, we're looking at praising God for his enduring mercy, the endurance of of God's mercy towards us in our past failures, in our state of disobedience to God. How we, who are the redeemed of God, we praise the Lord for his enduring mercy. Look at verse 1. It says, praise ye, verse 1, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever oh give thanks praise ye the lord hallelujah that word praise is hallelujah praise the lord why for god's great mercy to an often rebellious and an often ungrateful israel again to drive the point home thankfulness for god's blessings thankfulness and gratitude for god's care think about it Think about it, how often we have rebelled against God and how often we have shown our lack of gratitude to God. And in spite of that, God still has his hand of favor and his mercy and his goodness upon us. So this is why the Psalter is saying, praise ye, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. The phrase hallelujah, is, it, it drives, it makes the, the believer think about God be praised. And it's uttered in worship as an, ex, as an expression of rejoicing. We're rejoicing and expressing our joy for who God is in our lives. That's why worship, praise, individually, collectively, there ought to be some expression of our appreciation for God. That's why, again, the Psalter says, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. God be praised. Worship God. And it's an express, and it's an expression of joy. We rejoice. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. The Psalter here is actually making a plea. Making a plea to all who God is bringing back to remembrance how ungrateful we have been towards God, how rebellious we've been towards God, and how disobedient we've been towards God, but God is still good to us. So the Psalter is, he said, oh, give thanks. He's making a plea, an action of making an emotional or earnest appeal. And that's what I'm saying as the teacher of this lesson. It's not for me only, but I'm, I'm asking the Lord to use this platform to provoke all the believers of Jesus Christ to give thanks unto the Lord. It's a plea, it's a plea, an emotional, earnest, sincere appeal to you to give thanks unto Yahweh, unto Jehovah, because it tells us here in verse one, for he is good, he is good, the character that God exercises towards the saints according to our various circumstances and relationships. And relationships. That's what goodness is, how God's character is, is given towards us, shown towards us as the saints of God, no matter what our situation is. Again, always remember, we say here at Greater Friendship, Christians, believers, 
the saints of God, the pupils, the disciples of Jesus Christ, we should be thinkers and rememberers. And as we think and remember, we think about the character of God towards us, his goodness, his goodness that he shows to us over and over again, again, in spite of our times of ungratefulness, in spite of our times of rebelliousness, in spite of our times of being disobedient to God, God is good to us consistently. That's why I'm so glad God is the one who's the provider of my salvation. It's not man, it's not me, because man, if he had control of my salvation and I went towards him like I went towards God, I'm sure he would revoke it. But our salvation in Christ Jesus is secure. We have eternal security, eternal salvation through the goodness of God, through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. And so, hallelujah to the Lord. Give thanks, appreciation, gratitude unto Yahweh, for he is good, and also for his mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. What is mercy? Mercy is God forgiving and withholding the punishment that is justly deserved. I want you to think about what mercy is. God forgiving. And not only forgiving the redeemed, but withholding the punishment that is justly deserved. Every last believer that's saved, we deserve eternal damnation. But in the goodness of God and the mercy of God, withholding. Now, this is why we celebrate Christ Jesus. I dealt with this in last week's uh, Bible study. Christ Jesus propitiated for us, meaning he became our sacrifice. He pleased God because God's wrath had to be pleased. Enter in Jesus Christ, who was our propitiation, the believers, the believers propitiation, our sacrifice, the one who pleased and took the wrath of God away from us, the believer, upon himself. That's what he did on the cross. That's a good God. That's a good Savior. That's mercy. Sin had to be dealt with. And you and I have sinned. All have sinned. All. There's, there are no exclusions. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But because of Jesus Christ and what he has done by his atoning work, propitiating and expiating. Expiating is the removal. Propitiation is the satisfying God's wrath. The expiation is the removal of God's wrath towards us. That's why we say hallelujah, praise be to God for what Christ Jesus has done. In verse 2 says, who can utter the mighty, act, the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praises? The psalmist is saying in the midst of praise, recognize that our praise isn't enough. We praise him, we worship him, but we focus on all that God has done for us. You, you hear it say we can't praise him enough. And that's a true statement because to look at what he has done, whew, it, we just can't put forth enough praise. And in spite of us not being able to put forth enough praise, God's goodness and mercy still follows us all the days of our lives. Regardless of whether we feel like praising, whether we don't feel like praising, whether we're up this moment or not this moment, however we are, we're like a roller coaster up and down, but God's goodness and mercy is still upon us. So in the midst of praise, we must acknowledge we still can't praise him enough for what he has done for us. God's mighty acts are so many that they are beyond description. We can't even describe them all. We can't even, in our finite minds, we can't even remember all the blessings and all the acts of kindness and all the acts of benevolence that God has done towards his people. We can't even remember all. Remember them all. Even though as Christians we ought to be thinkers and rememberers, we can't remember them all. Because out of our mother's womb, we were born in sin, shaping in iniquity from our mother's womb. So you... You, as far back as you can remember, you and I cannot remember all the things that we did, but the acts of Christ, the acts of God took care of everything that we needed to have 
have, have care. So in the midst of our praise, remember that, beloved. Remember that our praise can't cover all that God has done. He has done so much. He's done everything. He's done it all. But that does not stop our praise. Even though our praise doesn't cover everything, the mighty acts of God, that still does not stop us to praise. In essence, what that does, that is a stimulus for us to praise. Because of the things we can't remember, God's covered it. The things that we can't recognize and go back and think about, God's got it covered. So that, that, that should compel us. That should be the driving force to praise him. Because of this, we cannot fully declare all praise to him. Even though we do say all praise, when we say that, we're saying ah, all praise is due him, but I can't praise him enough. But in spite of it, I'm going to praise him with everything I got. I'm going to praise him with all my mind. I'm going to praise him with all my heart. I'm going to praise him with all my strength. Everything I got, even though in comparison to what he has done for the believer and in return what we do in praise it does not match up but again that's the driving point that's the catalyst who can utter the mighty acts of the lord who can show forth all his praise notice those question marks in verse two again thinking a question makes you think and so think about oh my god even though I, my praise doesn't cover everything he does I'm still going to praise. I'm still going back to verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. I'm going to still worship him. I'm going to still lift up my hands and say, saying hallelujah. I'm still going to plead with others. Hey, praise God. He is worthy of the praise. Praise him. Think about what you can remember. If it's just one deed, that's enough right there. You might can't remember it all, but just one thing. That ought to be the catalyst for causing praise to come. Look at verse 3. It says, blessed are they that keep judgment. And he that doeth righteousness at all times. Those who walk in obedience to God. The Bible says blessed. Blessed means happy. Happy. When we do right. That's all. I'm talking to believers now. I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm talking to believers. When we do right, you know we're happy. When we do wrong, the Holy Spirit convicts us on our, of our wrongdoing. And so, the repentance is daily. But when we do wrong, until... We go to God. I stated this on Psalms out of Psalms 51 where David says, Lord, I've sinned against thee. Against thee only have I sinned. Restore in me the joy of my salvation. The joy in creating me a clean heart. Restore. So in our, our disobedience, joy sometimes is taken away from us. So because of this, we, we must understand we, 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 the Bible says, blessed are they that keep his judgment. So it is best just to do what's right. Who, who in their right mind does not like being happy? Who in their right mind does not like being joyous? And as a believer, that's what God has given us. We say all the time, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. But what we can do by being not obedient to God, we put a damper on our joy. Blessed, the Bible says, are they that keep judgment, do what's right, and he that doeth righteous. Not at some times, at all times. Now, is that possible in this flesh? The Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So our flesh falls short, short at times. Look back at Christ. Because even when our flesh starts, falls short at times, Christ has us covered. Bible said, I dealt with this not too long ago. Be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. Be one with the Lord. Be, be in, 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 a, in a sense, be honorable as the Lord is honorable. So that those times when we're less honorable, in the eyesight of God, because of Christ Jesus, we're still honorable. That's why all praise, all glory, all honor is unto the Lord. Because in God's eyesight, at all times, we are honorable. But you and I know that there are times that we're not. But the times that we are, blessed are they that keep judgment. And he that doeth righteousness at all times. I'll be first to say I'm the chief. 
I'm the chief. I don't do everything right at all times. And the Holy Spirit convicts me and let me know, you know, you're wrong. And so when I go to the Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I repent. I've sinned against thee. Lord is such a forgiving God. Now we don't continue to tempt God. We don't continue to try God. And so God, as God gives us this understanding, our walk becomes more a walk of a righteous walk. Our walk becomes more of a walk where our judgments are doing the things the right way. And so therefore, that gives us happiness. That gives us peace. That gives us joy. Blessed are they that keep judgment. And he that doeth righteousness at all times. Verse 4 says, remember me. Here we go, Christians. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation. Here the Psalter is praying to be visited by God with God's salvation. The, psalm, the psalmist is asking for God's help in showing him favor in his present troubles. See, as Christians, we, true Christians, real Christians, we, we not too proud to beg. And, 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 and it gives us the reason why in verse 4, remember me. We have to go to, that's a, again, that's asking the Lord uh, in a sense for, for, to show favor. Remember me, he says, O Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, with thy favor, with thy kindness, with thy consideration that thou bearest unto thy people. Notice the latter part says, O visit me with thy salvation. The bottom line, beloved, simply put, God is the great physician. And in our troubled time, with our ailments, we cannot go to God. We are too sick. We are too weak. We are too feeble. We are inapt. We are not able to visit the great physician. Therefore, he visits us. Why do you think the Bible said Jesus Christ started not robbery? To be equal to God. And he descended. He came to where we were in our troubles. He came to us where we were in our sins and our trespasses and our wrongdoing. He came to us. And if we remember, we ask the Lord, Lord, remember. I'm asking for your help. I, I am weak. Die strong. I need you, Lord, to remember me. Remember, O oh Lord, the Bible says in verse 4, remember me, O oh Lord, with thy favor, with thy blessings. That thou bearest unto, notice not anybody, but thy people. Then the psalmist pleads again to God, begs God, oh, visit me with my salvation. As we close in verse 5, we're going to see what he's asking for as far as deliverance. Where that latter part says, oh, visit me with thy salvation. But I want to drive the point home. We are too weak and feeble and unable to go to God. And I'll plead in all our troubles. I'll plead. And all our disobedience, and our plea, and our, our wrongdoing is, Lord, visit me. And this is the reason why in verse 5, three reasons in verse 5, and we're done. First of all, that I may see the good of thy chosen. Secondly, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation. And thirdly, that I may glory with thine inheritance. Three reasons why verse 4 and, and 5, they... They chime, they come together. Three reasons why we're asking the Lord to remember me. Three re reasons why we're asking the Lord to show us with favor towards his people, to visit us. First one, three reasons. Seeing, the Bible says in verse 5, that I may see the good of thy chosen. Seeing the blessings of God to his people by God's mighty works. God's chosen people, as the chosen people of God, when we see God delivers not only ourselves, us individually, when we see God's salvation and deliverance and how he rescued, rescues the people of God, that ought to bring joy to our heart. Notice he says here in verse 5, three reasons. First reason, that I may see the good of thy chosen. Remember back over in verse 1, Verse 1 says, praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord. Why? For he is good. Here in verse 5, that I may see the good of thy chosen. That I may see the benefits of God's chosen people. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me, selecting me, plucking me out. Lord, you chose me. I didn't choose you. You visited me. Came to where I was. And so when those, the people of God, who God has given that understanding, that 
It is the Lord who has visited us. Oh man, that's grateful. That's being thankful. That's being thankful for this first reason. Again, in verse 5, that I may see with my own eyes, physically and spiritually, the good, the goodness of thy chosen. Secondly, it says that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation. Look at the collectedness of this. Sharing in the joy with the blessed and redeemed of God. I love it when God brings his people together collectively. And God's people who are brought together collectively by the power and the might of God, we share in the joy with the blessedness, how the redeemed, how we are blessed by God's goodness. We share together. As a Christian, you're not on this island by yourself. When God blesses a brother and sister, we ought to be thankful. We ought to be grateful. Thankful God how he's blessing you and I individually, but we see collectively this nation that is, look at it says again, that I may rejoice in the gladness of that God's nation, God's people, God's family, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. That's what we've been emphasizing in Ephesians as we've gone through the book of Ephesians. Oneness. The body of Christ collectively blessed. And so the body of Christ collectively blessed we rejoice together. The Bible says we mourn with those who mourn. We rejoice with those who rejoice. Collectively together as the nation of God's people. And thirdly, in verse 5, that I may glory with thine inheritance. The people of thy inheritance. Celebrating. Being a part of the victory with God's people. God's people, we have the victory. I, I'm looking at this camera on this Thanksgiving day celebration ease and every day is a day of Thanksgiving but tomorrow we'll be set aside spending time with family breaking bread I pray with your loved ones I pray the Lord will bring you to God's house that we might celebrate together collectively and as we do so we ought to come with a mindset of Thanksgiving and gratitude for the blessings and the care that God has given us through all of our troubled times how he's brought us through our sins, our trespasses, our iniquities. All have sinned. All. I, read, I said that earlier. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God for his sin. We are saved by the grace of God. And so we have, those of us who are redeemed, God has prepared a life of inheritance. Us, together. And one. One. The, de the definition of one is not two, not a divide. One is whole. One is the body. And so as the body of Christ, let's collectively show thanks. Let's collectively show praise. Let's celebrate collectively together the victory, the victory, the victory we have through Jesus Christ. That's salvation. God has given us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanksgiving for a Christian is thanking Christ, thanking God for the victory he's given us through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. All the other stuff, the ham, the turkey, the, 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 the sweet potatoes, the dressing, the potato salad, all that stuff that we're going to feast on tomorrow, greens, or what, whatever your dish is going to be, whatever your meal is going to be, that's, that's, that's peripheral stuff. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, going back up to the righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things God will add unto you. And the Bible in that previous verse out of Matthew says, God knows what we stand in need of. First of all, he know we need the redeemed. He knew we needed to be saved. He knew we had to have a visit from him. So that's my emphasis on thanksgiving and gratitude. All, he has done it all, beloved. All we only reason we're in the equation, we are the recipients of God's goodness. We are the recipients of God's mercy. We are the recipients of God's grace. So I, I plead with you. I plead with you as a redeemer of God, as we said uh, over in, oh, in verse one, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I'm pleading. Give thanks. Tomorrow, I look forward to being with the saints, celebrating collectively. Giving thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever.
Bow with me in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for these moments that you've allowed us to share out of Psalms 106. I pray that you have used this earthen vessel, the treasure that you placed in this earthen vessel, to rightly and responsibly divide the word of truth. I pray, Lord, as the word has gone forth from your word out of Psalms 106, that you've given ears to hear, to be receptive to your word, and that it does not stop there. You've given us ears to hear and a heart, a mind to do. Not only hearers, but doers. All to your glory, hallelujah. All to your praise, hallelujah. All to your honor, your majesty, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You and you alone are worthy of the praise. Give us a mindset, Lord, to be thankful in everything. In every, not some things, in everything. The blessings that you bestow. In troubled times, make us to give thanks. In times that things are going fine, make us to give thanks. In everything, make your people give you thanks. Thanks, because Lord, that's your will that you've given us in Christ Jesus concerning us. Thank you for doing for us what we couldn't do. As a rebellious, times of ungratefulness, times, times of lack of appreciation. Thank you for doing for us, the redeemed of God, everything that you've done. We bless and honor your holy name. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we offer this prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.